Um, Light Tonight this year, as you will see, has got over 60 artwork installations, ranging from interactive um, art displays to interdisciplinary programs, live performances, and of course, very mesmerizing light projections. Right now at Light Tonight uh, Media Preview event, so this is an event which uh, I think every Singaporean anticipates every year. So stay tuned to our video as we bring you along the installations uh, for the Light Tonight 2024. One of the reasons why Kumari chose the uh, Saga seat is because if you notice in nature, right, you don't really see Saga seats anymore. So she's trying to uh, bring across the point of uh, the need to conserve uh, nature. This installation is also a uh, reimagining of one of uh, previous works, which is actually a bronze sculpture of a saga seat. An interesting fact is the projection music was actually composed by uh, Milosh himself, with influences from bands such as The Beatles and Pink Floyd. One knuckles a notch, we are a creative studio and a visograph press. Uh, today we are here with our friends um, to present to you a very strange and unusual war of winter sonata, summer bukata, led by a mystical creature named Sama. Um, just a little backstory about our title, we will ask a lot about this. But, um, we're tossing around names for our project, um, but thanks to <laughs> the new Mukata store open just right below our studio and the smell of cooked meat from down below just lights up our brains. Hence, um, yeah, it, the word just click and vibe with uh, what we were cooking up for a project title at the moment. So uh, just gotta say, uh, all of us here, we are we are food motivated, uh, food mo motivated bunch, and uh, it always help us with staying creative and sane. Yeah. Okay. So um, so about this projection, um, this is actually our first light projection where we are involved in many different aspects, so such as. Uh, writing a story, directing, art, conceptualizing, storyboarding, character design, illustrating, and also uh, what we specialize in, visograph printing. Um, and um, there's, there's also a crazy visual animation in our work, so later you get to see the later part. Um, yeah, and I'm actually very aesthetic that um, this crazy weird story that we created uh, could actually make, uh, actually make it onto a historical monument. Uh, so, um, also just um, what it means by reimagining, uh, as this is the title for this year's uh, light projection team. Uh, so, about three years ago, we worked on a comic zine, uh, and it's called Holy Mountain, and it features our cat going on a trip. Uh, then you're know, like, um, yeah, it's um, going around Earth to seek answers to life. It's an existential cat. So um, yeah, and then she made this uh, time machine out of, uh, she crafted this time machine out of secretly from our stolen Rizzo machine parts uh, to discover, um, and you know, the sad thing is when she discovered Earth wasn't a very pretty, uh, it wasn't as pretty as she envisioned. Uh, so you know, it's a very absurd story and we created that to, um, during the second lockdown um, three years ago and it really helped us get through tough times. So uh, just fast forward today, uh, we've taken the old work, which is the comic zine that we did and we published, and we reimagine it and stir it in some new twists and turns, and we shot her up to the stars um, and present her in a new medium, which is animation and web projection. Uh, and it's our very, very first animation project. We actually never thought that it was possible to even do this because we had no prior experience. And uh, okay, so very fast one, uh, uh, the inspiration between, uh, behind the artwork is really a mesh of everything that defines us as a studio. Um, you know, our take on life absurd, uh, absurdities, absurd, absurdities, 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 and our influence of pop culture, films, video games, comic, animation, and printed matter. 
and we infuse all of that into what we do for a living and we are also for this project we are also quite ambitious uh, uh, and uh, even though it's our first uh, light projection project we try to make it our best okay um, and uh, just uh, to take note um, so this animation is for 47 minutes but um, it took us more than four months of very uh, like lots of hard work, numerous stages that we have to go through, shoots and reshoots of the Rizogua for uh, animation scene, um, adjustments, a lot of a lot of adjustments, and um, and it. Okay, so uh, last thing, take note that um, that from three forty seconds onwards to four minutes is our Rizogua animation. That's like the the part where it's quite special to us. So I'm gonna give a very very big shout out to. Nikami Studio, uh, our main collaborator, and also Beautiful Discus from Japan, but they are not here today because they are based elsewhere. And uh, they are in charge of the music composition, so we're going to pass the mic to Nikami to do a really quick um, introduction of himself. Hi everyone, I'm Nick, the animator. Just, I'll make it quick. So these guys had a crazy idea. This is their first animation, and they have so many ideas. but. Uh, we had limited time and resources, but we are, I'm very happy. I think we made it work. So, just to cut it short, I hope you enjoy the show. We are very, very proud of it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. I'm, uh, I'm Justin Lo, uh, the artist for this uh, installation. So, you are my first group. So, I think I'm still very energetic. So, uh, roughly what this work is about, it is about uh, the relationship between writing and technology and i think this is something that is very relevant now since um, the progress of ai and all these things and when we're talking about writing uh it's something that is very technical there is the technological side of it but when writing in terms of uh, li literature like the literary side of it there's something that is sometimes we say that is more uh, irrational or more uh, sentimental and all these things there's not so technological so i use this uh, from an essay by Karl popper uh, of uh, clocks and clouds because clocks are very precise clouds are a bit more uncertain ambiguous whatever you call it so i think uh, in literary form there's always this thing so, uh, secondly uh, to play with the idea of how we engage a reader sometimes it's not with a lot of text just as we receive a message with a lot of text we might not want to read it immediately because these days our reading habit change a lot so but if we notice something missing maybe that will make us curious so uh, the words here, are, the, it, it's a poem that's written, but there are some letters missing, and I le leave it open for the viewer or the reader to interpret or to reinvent the poem again. Yeah. So I won't go into a long speech. I thought that maybe you all have read about it, and you all have any question, I can answer here in person. Yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, we are students from the School of the Arts Singapore. So I'm Yeting. This is Xiaomin, and this is Cloud, our music composer. Uh, our team was formed as part of an extracurricular activity from our shared love for animation. We are self-taught and we focus on 2D hand-drawn animation using software like Procreate and Figure Pro. So we consist of visual arts and three art students from years 4 to 6. Actually some of us, like the literary art students, have like no visual arts or animation experience. Uh, and our music composer is now we also had the opportunity to participate in last year's Light the Night Festival, meaning this is the second time we are contributing to this festival. Because um, we think that art 
music of passage, I pay close attention to the narrative conveyed through these cultural objects, which have traveled a long way since the 9th century, and quite into our own hands and museums as seen on the screen. So I used one way motif to introduce these objects' journey, and elaborated on it by changing its accompaniment and instruments to be stormy seed and tranquil traversion. So since a lot of these objects also originated from the Middle East, with Entertainment Plaza. So we invite visitors to reimagine and uh, to basically um, view the museum and its collections with new, new eyes. So bringing um, visitors on a thrilling and imaginative journey. Um, some of our program highlights are Party Pavilion, which you see here behind me, by our visual artist, Howie Kim. Um, we've selected Howie to, in, uh, to, to work with Howie on the installation because we feel that how we style um, with creating unnatural figures, juxtaposing them um, in the surreal and um, mysterious realm, blurring the lines between um, physical, the reality and the fantasy would be a great, great fit for the theme. So some of our, our other programs, um, sorry, how we will be sharing with you about the artwork in a short bit, in a short bit, um, we do have other programs in the going on in the museum. So um, we have the auditorium where um, visitors will look forward to cabaret performances, which includes uh, magic performances, um, circus performances, puppetry, traditional martial arts, as well as um, dance performances. We also have the arcade where visitors will be able to um, play retro arcade games um, and also check out uh, objects related to games uh, in the museum, from chess to Pachisi. Um, we also have objects of amusement, a thrilling game ride where visitors will be able to go on an exciting journey um, to in, in search of like selected objects in the museum. And you're hearing it from us first, um, visitors will be able to redeem free beer by completing fun challenges with our official beer partner Heineken Singapore. Um, last but not least, visitors will be able to enjoy discounted admission to our current special exhibition, Manila Galleon. So there's actually something exciting and enriching for everyone here at ACM. So now, um, I'll perhaps pass the mic on to Howie where he'll share more about the artwork party pavilion. Hi everyone. Hi everyone, my name is Hawi and I'm the artist behind Party Pavilion. Uh, as I generally work on the digital medium, I always find it exciting to get to work on an installation as I get to see my works come to life physically. Um, with Party Pavilion, as the title suggests, it is, uh, it is a place of fun and entertainment. Uh, it is inspired by the Asian aesthetics and decorative arts of some of the objects that you'll find in ACM. It is also inspired by the colors and lights of um, theme parks and I think when you put these things together they kind of remind us of the nostalgic uh, glitzy era of cabaret dancers and uh, rides from some of the old theme parks of Singapore. Um, I think the aim of this work is to, you know, um, the aim of this work is to remind us that life is a party and it's also to um, really bring back some of these feelings of um, you know youth, youthfulness and, and carefreeness that you get when you go to a theme park. And with that said, I invite you guys to check out the installation, have a walk through it, and yeah, have fun. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, don't miss the disco ball. Hi everybody, welcome to uh, the Wayang spaceship. My name is Ming Wong, I'm 
the artist who uh, created this piece. It has moved from the back of the Singapore Art Museum, where it was for the last year and a half, uh, in front of the Martina Port Terminal. The idea was to do for the public artwork that Sam wanted to make. I proposed a, a version of the traditional Chinese Wayang stage that would move from place to place. It's an itinerant uh, Chinese theatre, the Wayang, except that I made a, a futurist version of it as part of my research uh, in trying to create a science fiction Chinese opera project. Actually, the whole light to night uh, concept can be linked back to when the Wayang stage was erected by uh, Chinese immigrants who migrated to Singapore uh, in the early days of Singapore. Uh, actually, around here, when the harbour just used to be here and the, and the boats were docked in. So actually, the Wayang stage would have been a very common sight in this, in this area. So I'm very glad that this can be uh, uh, resurrected uh, for the festival. The site is, uh, is quite, uh, 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 I think there's a lot of resonance against the backdrop of modern Singapore. But what we have here actually is a structure that is built by the last uh, Wayang stage builder, Mr. Lee. We collaborated with him through the architect, Randy, Randy Chan. Yeah, we collaborated with Mr. Lee to build the, the structure of the Wayang. But what I did was I changed the, besides the wood, which is original, the canvas are uh, reflective, the scenography on the stage, okay, the light, they are light boxes, they are mirror surfaces in the daytime, they reflect the surroundings, but at night, at precisely 7.15 p.m. every night, when the sun just goes down, it lights up in a symphony of color, light and video. We will do a, a demo for your viewing pleasure tonight. So you have to imagine most of the day is camouflage. It's, it's mirrored, it's reflecting the surroundings. But at a specific time, when the sun goes down, it activates, it wakes up. Like a spaceship that just landed and is opening up a portal to the past. What the materials use are, you will see, I use fluorescent tube lights, the old kind that are flickering, uh, and I've used certain film uh, uh, panels made of dichroic films. Dichroic films are the films that change color from at different angles, and I'm sure you've seen them used in some, uh, some shops or some products. But what I've done with experiments is that I've made a kind of infinity uh, pattern with the fluorescent lights and it makes a kind of illusion of a portal of depth. The colors that you actually get are a whole spectrum of beautiful pastel colors that are reminiscent of the colors from Chinese opera costumes, which are actually based on the visual spectrum and complementary colors. Uh, and besides that, the center part opens up into a, a screen where there is a video of uh, a collage of all Chinese opera movies, mostly from Hong Kong, uh, collage together with early science fiction films from the same era, 50s, 60s, uh, mostly from Eastern Bloc countries. Uh, and you get a collage of uh, a mix of technology and tradition, of science fiction and uh, traditional Chinese opera and Chinese culture. Uh, I think there's a lot of information for you to take in. Maybe it's good to have a look and come around if you have any questions. Thank you, thank you, Wong. Thank you. All right, like uh, as Wong mentioned, we can come back later after the tour to check out the uh, demo, right, of the uh, wine station. Yeah. Yeah. Is it now? Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, good.
Costumes. Uh, they are costumes that are quite complex uh, and have a kind of world uh, uh, within. So our wish for this work was to bring the viewers uh, to travel within the environment uh, of these uh, costumes. Um, I will try also to to start to say something about our group, our collective system, because actually we are not uh, really uh, animators or. Uh, Artist. Actually, we are an interdisciplinary collective uh, formed by myself. I'm Laura Miotto. Uh, I'm an architect. Shmin uh, Lim. She's a, a graphic designer, and then the sound is done by Ramesh Krishnan, who's a sound designer as well. And actually, for this uh, production, uh, we have collaborated also with Shrita Mani, who's uh, here with us, and who also had the vision actually to bring us to work on this uh, theme. We as a collective have worked a lot in museums and so we were very keen to work uh, with something that come from an archival collection. We work with costumes from the opera before and we knew that there's this very, very rich uh, visual culture within. So Shubin did a lot of work in translating this because it has such a beautiful graphic quality that could be translated uh, uh, at this scale, right? So there's something uh, very beautiful that we find uh, in these uh, costumes and also I think uh, it brings us to think that uh, for instance the landscape of one of these costumes like if we think of a Shang Emperor a male uh, uh, costume it has uh, a bottom which uh, has a sea and mountains and then there is a celestial sky it's almost a cosmic vision that uh, we are trying to bring to the scale of the building. Um, so very, very interesting experience for us to experiment for that, uh, with that. It also is the first time for us that we work at the scale of uh, uh, this large architecture building. Um, I think it's very meaningful to work on the skin of a building because if we think of a building maybe as a body, this is a theater, it has its own skin, it protects us, but also it's uh, it's uh, something like uh, a face of a building that presents what is inside to the rest of the city, right? So the facade is also this kind of face that talk to us. For us also, it was interesting to see how this space of this building, it has two big uh, spaces for performance, but also a long neck, right? And so we had to work with this uh, space for the for the projection that is uh, very unique and we have tried to interpret a little bit like as if it is a body that is dressing these costumes. Um, also I would like to say something about the sound because the sound itself is also inspired to especially Teochew and the Cantonese uh, and also a bit of Beijing opera that possibly is part of the repertoire that is placed in, in, here in Singapore. So. Um, the sound, uh, it's also been modified uh, into something that is more um, playing with the xylophone, but it has uh, a certain quality that is very warm, that is very, it, it is um, also typical of this kind of instrument that is percussion, also uses wood, uh, it's very light as well, it creates uh, a lot of surprise, there are a lot of percussions also that are used uh, within uh, Chinese opera itself. Uh, you will see also, if you haven't seen yet, that there are four movements in this uh, production, in terms of story that it tells. It starts from the sea and mountains, and then it goes a little bit uh, along the idea that in Chinese opera there are different characters. It 
typical male characters, the sheng, and then the dan, the female. So there are different movements that bring us through the, um, the, the symbols, the elements that are in these costumes, and also they have a different character and a very strong characterization with music. Uh, so the, the end of it is the warrior, I have touched more or less on everything. Um, uh, just only uh, one thing that I wanted to point out because it's very dear to us. Uh, uh, all the um, animation that you see, they are really derived from the national collection. Uh, these are beautiful costumes that belong to the national collection of Singapore and that we are hoping to bring to life, obviously, and also to see in a contemporary way. Also, we are very consider ourselves very fortunate to be able to work on the um, Victoria Theatre facade, which is a very important public space of this city. And of course, we're young, it's been always belonging to the streets of Singapore. So we hope that with this, we will resonate with that. I'm on Nikki Cole. And uh, some of the AR components that you will see, that you'll be able to take part in, right? It's uh, developed by students of the Masik Poly. And Nikki is a Singaporean illustrator and designer, and uh, they enjoy creating self-indulgent works that range from intense and fantastical to silly and weird. Their current work exists primarily as uh, risograph prints, uh, so just like those guys, knuckles and notch, right? So their interests include colorful toys, stressful shows, and decorative borders. All right, a little bit about the work, some of the uh, key meaning of the work. It's about a hidden. Uh, it's Basically, a hidden utopia where toys live complex life akin to ours. And Nikki has worked on various projects with prominent names in Singapore, such as our grandfather's story and every grand. And Nikki's art making process is about indulging herself in what she wants to see out there. You reach deep into what she really wanted as a kid. She likes uh, elaborate detail, as you can see from the illustrations, right? And involve, that involves a mythology. And one of her favorite artists is Audrey Beardsley, a 1920s English illustrator. And she is also inspired by manga and Taoist art in Chinese temples, which she grew up around. Nikki mentions that she does not like to talk about the philosophies of her art making, but believes that the best of it is found at the interse intersection between honesty and desire. So it's really long, it stretches a whole other parts. So uh, feel free to walk down. Yeah, the AR component is this way, if you want to try it out. Production manager of the US East Coast team. Mm. So, Whisper Lodge is an ASMR production company and we specialize in doing live ASMR experiences. So, what that means is we kind of perform out the ASMR videos that you see online and we use a lot of props and a lot of like uh, touch. Also. Um, so, Wishful Thinking is an installation with an accompanying performance that we do only on Saturday nights. Um, and the installation comprises of like four different rooms. Uh, we were very inspired by uh, finding some form of like escapism in our very stressful, mundane Singaporean lives. Uh, so that's how we kind of like interpreted the festival theme of Reimagine. You are hopefully going to reimagine what escapism looks like uh, from something that maybe has like a negative connotation to something positive and healthy and necessary for you to survive under capitalism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we also wanted to reimagine how we approach ASMR because for most people, ASMR is this thing to help them relax, right? And when we do a lot of our previous performances, they are also very long and durational and we really like make people get into the zone. But that takes a lot of time and in this kind of festival environment, we know people are going to spend 10 minutes here maybe. So we design everything inside to be like very, very small touch points to give people who are new to art and new to ASMR a taste of what it is. So there are a lot of interactive points inside that like you can touch a lot of things and play with a lot of things inside. Um, we can explain to you each 
Zoom also. Uh, so the first one is the home office of Zen, who's our main character from our performance. And she's just a typical Singaporean person working at an MNC, has a busy husband, takes care of most of the child carrying and household duties, uh, also shares this home office with her daughter Sage, who is very naughty and just like draws all over the walls, uh, quite a handful. Um, feel free to touch everything in that space. You can turn pages, you can open drawers and just you know touch everything. Uh, and then from there you press the escape key on Zen's home office computer setup and that's going to trigger um, a blinding pink light in the next room. So you walk through the curtains um, and you're going to get a sensory overload of pink which is going to mess with your senses so that when you go to the next room everything looks a bit funny. That third room is called the brain room and that's where you're going to um, experience memories that she finds very comforting on the ceiling. So we have mattresses on the floor and you can lie down and sort of relax into it, uh, listen to the sounds and watch the visuals of very nostalgic things like Zen writing her sitsu as a young child or, or playing with the corner of her pillowcase. Um, in addition to that, we also have DIY ASMR stations on the side where you can try your own things. Uh, and also two audio recordings of her memories recounting her experiences with ASMR. Uh, and then that final room uh, is the fourth one, the brain room. Oh, sorry, the hand room. <laughs> uh, and in the hand room, we have magnified certain textures in Zen's life that she also finds very soothing. Um, and so you'll be able to listen to the magnified sound of four different very normal home textures that she's also grown up with. Um, the fur on her family dog, kitchen tile, the rattan chair that her grandpa used to sit in. Um, and so you're gonna be able to create your own DIY ASMR soundscape in that room and just play with it as much as you want. Yeah. And just share a bit more about our performance also. The one that takes place on Saturday night, uh, there are two parts. Part one is kind of like the the storytelling of Zen where it's a small group that's a start and end and a narrative and we bring you through the rooms and Zen will kind of like be embodied by an actor who will tell you her life story and we are like ASMR spirits that help Zen along the way. Then part two of the performance is called ASMR Just For You and that one is more like publicly accessible. It takes place in this open area and uh, me, Chia and our other performer will offer like five minute one-on-one -on -one ASMR interactions with anybody who wants to participate. So we'll use a series of props and we'll do whispering um, and it's kind of like first come first serve whoever wants to try. We'll be doing that later right after your tour. If you want you can come back. Uh, please feel free to like kind of wander in and take a look.
in front of you, you can see ping pong go around. It is actually an uh, installation uh, performative piece by the artist Lee Wen. Does anyone know the artist Lee Wen? Okay, the artist Lee Wen is a very important uh, performance artist uh, of Singapore. He is a cultural medallion recipient and he's a local pioneer of the performance art who is best known for his uh, Yellow Man series. You can check it out in the, the DBS uh, Gallery 3. Uh, Lee Wen has passed. He uh, left us in the year 2019. Yeah. So feel free to go in and uh, play a round of ping pong. So some of the key meaning of the work, uh, yeah. So it's about different uh, perceptions of the limitation of the game. So to foster a unique and broader dialogue. So when you play the uh, ping pong in his uh, on his table, right, he's trying to make you uh, question and to reimagine um, the ping pong table as like a conference table, perhaps with an invitation for you know just the ordinary person to join in on a conversation. So the ping pong installation is an, intera is an interactive feature, reflected as a game format. Visitors are allowed to play and reflect on the artwork. And um, considering the limited internal space, it will be more suitable to uh, accommodate like a maximum of six people or so. So if you want, you can give it a try. Oh, very sorry. Okay, one interesting fact about the work. Yeah, <laughs> He brought me to this space and right? tell me to do a show here. So the first thing I, I can't have is the vision of people being caught up in the air. So we just how all this idea of structure to be suspended and comes about. Um, and you also reminded me of the typical sculptures and vision that people are being caught up and being catch in the air. Yeah. And then the the man seated there, right? Can you see what the man is holding? So in that way, this work is, is not static, right? So it's always... 